Okay, hello, I'm Mauro Lopez. You, uh, I've worked, I've used Clojure for many years now, and and now I, now that I came to Singapore, I'm working at 10x, but not with Clojure, but it's okay. And has anybody here uh, heard of uh, logic programming, uh, Core Logic? Has anybody used Core Logic or Prolog? <laughs> okay. Okay, so it would be cool. It's just an introduction, so if you are if you were super advanced, it wouldn't be uh, so fun. But it would be cool. So logic programming is also known as relational programming. I tested this. Okay. Uh, so it's relational programming. So we use relations as opposed to functions. So it's a, a bit of a, of a difference with, uh, from who are used to functional programming. Uh, it's uh, declarative. So we, we don't tell the computer what to do or, or, or how to do. We just tell it what we want to see as, as the answer. We, we define the problem and it, tells, it gives us the solution. Uh, we can consider it a higher level than imperative programming or functional programming. Because of this, it, it, it's closer to how a human would define the problem. You simply specify a set of facts and, and rules or, or, uh, that manipulate those facts. And then it, you, you run the, the solver with this input. So logic programming, um, probably the, the most famous uh, implementation, or not implementation, but the f most fam famous <coughs> family of implementations is Prolog. Uh, it, it was created in 72, a long time ago. It was used in some practical uh, systems, practical applications. And when I was searching for this, the, the only two uh, practical things I found were these two. So it was used in Windows NT for network configuration to match all the, the configurations to give you a valid out output or to, to check that you have something valid. And it was also used uh, uh, for the first uh, implementation of Erlang. And, it, and because of this, it influenced uh, Erlang in its design. So even after they changed the implementation to some other, I think, C++ or something, uh, they, they still kept some, some prolog concepts. Uh, if you see the the language popularity index, it's actually Prolog is considered more popular than Clojure. It sounds strange, but that, well, that's what they say. It's more popular than Haskell, Kotlin, Lua, Erlang, Scheme. All of these so Prolog is do pretty well, but nobody seems to use it. It's only in this index, so I find it a bit suspicious. But okay. Uh, it also inspired uh, Datalog, which is used in many closure libraries, in particular in Datomic. So, and, and Cascalog and Datascript, which was based on Datomic. So we, we have probably, you, you have heard of Datalog before, even if you haven't used CoreLogic. And just like this, Prolog was used for artificial intelligence in the old times, before the AI winter. And it's good for symbolic manipulation, uh, manipulation of symbols and data structures and, and symbolic m mathematics. Uh, th there are many, many implementations of Prolog and some are pretty fast. So it's, in spite of being very high level, they could manage to make it considerably fast, like, as in much faster than a, than a a naive implementation. It's not super fast compared to other languages or something, but it's fast enough for m many problems. And then there's the other family of logic programming, which is Minikarin, which is much more uh, recent. It was Created and, and released in, in the recent schema in 2005. It's a it's a famous book, 
and it's in the series of the little schema and, and there's a, a new one coming out this, this August, uh, the little typer. I don't know if have anyone has seen. So it looks good. And it's, uh, it's much more minimalistic, so it's just a, a handful of primitives and everything else is implemented using these primitives. So it's something like scheme in this sense. And by the way, it, they use a scheme to implement the first version of Minikarin. Uh, it's pretty easy to implement. It, it fits on two printed pages on the book. And since it's easy, um, many people implement it as an exercise and uh, they're reading this book, but they don't program any scheme. They decide to implement in their own favorite language, implement Minikarin. So there are like, dozens of implementations. Most of them are abandoned because they were used as an exercise, not as a real, pro a real life project. Um, it's much easier to embed than Prolog because it's much more lightweight and you can implement in your own language. It doesn't have to be an external process. And it's, it's also much more functional, the, the, the internals of implementation. They don't have side effects. They don't have global state. They manipulate lazy sequences. So it's very different, different from Prolog. In Prolog, you, you change the state, and then when you see that you went to a, a, a wrong path, you change the state back. Not, not you as a, as a user of Prolog, but the implementation of Prolog has to do that. So it's much more different from functional program. To, uh, speaking specifically of CoreLogic, which is the mini current implementation in enclosure. It was implemented by D David Nolan, who implemented a bunch of uh, closure libraries like Ohm and CoreMatch. CoreMatch is like one, one, one subset of CoreLogic in 2010, and it's still uh, going strong. The last commit was last year, which is not so recent, but it's much more recent than almost any other mini current implementation. And I think after some time, like after seven years of development, it's stable enough. The system is small enough that it, there's not so much you can, you, you would do. Like he has fixed mostly all the bugs. And there are many, uh, didn't change here, sorry. There are many uh, closure libraries using CoreLogic. Many of them are kind of abandoned as well, but these three are active and they seem pretty cool. Uh, Kibit is for static code analysis, so it, it detects that you are doing uh, some some pattern that could be done in a different way. So it recommends changes to your source code, and it's very easy to extend. You just create a new logic rule. This Burleyman is a, a smart text editor created by the creator of Minikanon. He is still actively working on it and exploring. Uh, it's pretty cool. You can define the, the unit test, and it tries to give you some implementation of your source code. And then you see that the implementation seems wrong, for, not because it is wrong, but because your tests are not complete. And then you add a new test, and then it fixes the implementation until you are satisfied enough with the implementation. It's, it's pretty cool. And the other library, Expresso, is for symbolic computation, which is one of the things that logic programming excels at. So just to give a quick uh, refresher, when I say relational as opposed to function, it's that school concept. Like if you have a function that maps things from your input to the output set, uh, it must. It, it's convenient for programming because you need to to for every input you need one output and not multiple outputs and not zero outputs except for exceptions for when your program your function throws an exception that that's not exactly an output but but for the, the pure function that's the, the idea so you have the table or, or the diagram a relation as opposed to that. You can also have the diagram, but it starts to get messy very fast. So we usually only have the table. And it's not very clear which column is the input, which column is the output. So it's just a, uh, a series of facts. So 
person X thinks that person Y likes person Z. So this is true, this sentence is true for, for all these uh, triples, right? So this is a relation. Let's, let's use the repo a bit. Yay. Now I'd like to, you know, yeah. Um. Can you read? Yes. Can you read back there? OK. Zooms everything. <laughs> so let's skip the, the imports. So uh, let's say we declare a, a database with uh, a relation parent. And re we declare also the database of, of the facts, facts as in the rows in that table. So we can say that the parent of uh, John is Bobby, par another parent of. Uh, uh, um, uh, Parent of Mary is also Bobby, so Bobby has two children. And a parent of Bobby is Susan. I wrote here with capital letter in the beginning and full capital to make, to make it clear that this is older than this, which is older than this. A bit more intuitive. So, so Let's let's ask uh, the solver all the the parents of, of John. So it gives us a list with all the parents of John, which is in this case is only Bobby because we only have one fact stating that someone's parent is John. But you remember that there is no clear input or output, so we can uh, reverse the the question here. So we want to know everyone who's parent is Bobby. Then it, it gives us all of Bobby's children. So there are two possible values for, for Q that satisfy this fact. Two values here that would satisfy this fact given the database of facts. Okay? If we run this without using the database, so now I'm running from this closing print, not here it will give us an empty set because the database is empty. We can define other, uh, other relations. Uh, relations can compose. So if we decide to, to define a, a sibling, sibling relation, so X and Y are siblings, uh, when is this true? It is true if, uh, let's use fresh to introduce a new variable, so it's kind of a let. So if there is a there is some parent p, which is parent of x, and also parent of y, so x and y have a parent in common. They they are siblings, right? Okay. Now that I've, I've defined this, let's let's see all the um, all siblings of John. I forgot this. Oh. Okay. Ah, where is? Thanks. Ah, no. Okay. So. So not all siblings of John. John and Mary. Okay, it's saying that the same person is sibling of itself. <laughs> oh, that happens. Okay. Uh, yeah, there is this not equal here. 
So they must have a parent in common, and they must not be the same person. Right? <laughs> That's important. Now it's only Mary. We can also define another. As so we see here, we see that we can compose the, we can reuse uh, uh, relations. We are reusing the parent relation. That's a primitive defined in the database of facts. So we can also state a, a grandparent. So a great parent of, of X is if, if you have some some parent who is a, a parent of X and the parent of this parent is great par grandparent, right? Now we can ask for all grandparents. Yeah, same thing again. So we can ask for all grandparents of uh, in that case, Susan will have some grandchild, some grandchild. So John and Mary are grandchildren of Susan. We can also ask um, who is the grandparent of John, Susan. Uh, who is the grandparent of some random person that doesn't exist, nobody. We can even ask, um, suppose we had two other variables, A and B. Now we want B to be the grandparent of A, and Q to be the vector AB. So we want all the pairs of grandparents. So John and Susan is a pair of grandchild and grandparent, and Mary Susan is another pair. OK, so this is the basic, basic thing. Let's see. Ah, there's also this other basic. Uh, Can I read now? Yeah. OK. There are these primitive, uh, not primitive, but basic functions that are implemented in the core library of core logic. Member O and, and append O. It, almost all goals have this O in the end. It's, in the book, it's actually a small ball, like in a small circle, like in degrees. But here we type as O. Um, let's run here. So suppose we want all the members of, of this sequence, one, two, three. It will give us one and two and three. These are all the possible values that Q can have to be a member of this. If we specify that these two things must be true, so Q must be a member of one, two, three, and also a member of three, four, two, zero. This will give us the intersection of the two lists, right? So this is a basic operation. Uh, here we show this is the source code. How to implement member? O. It supports pa uh, pattern matching and destructuring. So uh, an, an element is a member of a list. If this list has has a head and a tail, and the head is exactly this element, then it's true. And it's also a member of the list if it has a head and a tail, and it's a member of the tail. So it, you can have a recursive implementation, recursive definition. Uh, append all is the same, the same idea. So for, for an empty list, now let's, let, let's first uh, show how it, how it works. So Q is the uh, concatenation of these two lists, right? You can also change the, the input here. 
So we may want to see who who, who do we have to concatenate to one and two to get one, two, three, four as the result. So Q must be three and four, right? So it's not clear who's the input, who's the output. Everything can be input or output. You can have no input at all and get all the the, the relations, all the tuples that satisfy the, the the question. You can have you can specify everything if you want. So you can give three and three and four and just check if it's true or not. So yeah. So if it starts with underscores, uh, it means that the the variable that we are asking is, is not bound. It's not ground, as they call it. Uh, grounded. Um, it means that any value of Q would satisfy this re this relation. So we're just checking if it, this is true or not. If we change here, it, it will give us an empty set, which means that the, the input is is false. It's impossible to satisfy. Well, let's see how append all works. So, one, one question. Uh, yes. Can, can it tell me which input went wrong? Which input? What do you mean? Because if you change, you can change any of the inputs to make it true. So it, it's not clear which input is wrong. If not logically inputs, then you cannot get it. Okay, like now you say, is this fix one two is is, is a fixed two element list? If it, if one and two is fixed element, is is it, is it a fixed size element uh, list? No, no, no. It could be uh, uh, any size. It, it, oops. Right, right, right. Uh, so it should be here. You see? So the input could have any any size. Uh, we could even generate it as a this. We can we can use closure functions here, no problem. So it's empty up because I'm starting with zero here. Okay, so you, you can use closure data structures. I haven't oh. tested with strings, but I think they should work. If a string doesn't work directly, you can convert it to a sequence and it should work. So for append all, so x concatenated to y uh, equals z if x is empty, and then you concatenate with anything and get the same anything. So underscore means you're not matching it to anything, but since it starts with y here in the, the argument list, in some y here, it will try to match. Or x has a, a head A and a tail D, y has something, and the result must have the same head A and a, oh no, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, X is A with tail D, and Y is this, and Z must be A with the with the tail R, so they must have the same tail, and the the tail R must be the result of D uh, concatenated with Y. So it's as if we were extracted ex extracted the head of X, and the tail of X would just concatenate with Y, and that gives Z. So, oops, not here. Okay, let's see one more example. So there is this zebra, zebra, oops, challenge. It's, it's like a, a puzzle, like a newspaper puzzle. You, you have probably seen some variation of, of this. Let me try to show here. So this is the the the, the, the question, no, no, not the question, but the the synthesis from the the, the exercise. So there are five houses. Uh, the Englishman lives in the red house. Red house. Spaniard owns the dog. So it's a. Uh, uh, 
Uh, let's see. So it's, a, it's this table of facts, but you don't know who owns the zebra. That's the question. So each, each person, each one of these five people, have uh, one color, one nationality, one drink, one smoke, one pet. And some of these facts are given in the input. And you have to deduce all the other facts until you, you, you know who, who has the zebra. OK, let's go back to our source code. So th these facts are a, a, almost a direct translation of those facts. So here we represent everything as uh, a tuple of five elements, nationality and uh, something and the drink and and then the whatever like the last one is the the color so a fact like this means that the person that drinks coffee lives in the greenhouse so uh, hs is the, the list of all the all it is the, the, the table that we will see in the, the end. So it's this table, it's H, it's a list of, of rows. So it's a, a list of size five, and each sub list has five elements. It's a list of lists. So <coughs> someone has milk. Uh, first in this list is the Norwegian person. Next to the Norwegian person is someone who lives in the blue house. Right to, uh, to the person that lives in the ivory house is the one in the greenhouse. It's exactly the, the facts there. And uh, the relations here are, are supposedly simple. They're not super complicated. So x, y, they're right. Yeah, so it, the relation right right O is X is, or Y is to the right of X uh, if, if they appear in this or order, X and Y, and then something else. Or if they don't appear in this order, but in this something else, then recursively they appear in that sublist in that order. So inside the, the tail, they are X, Y in that order, right? And next O will be similar. So Either one is next to the one is right to the other, or the other is at the right of the one. And first one. So we just run that. Um, actually, so here is the pre-printed ver version of the output on the right-hand side. So we see that we get five. Tuples, each one with uh, five elements representing the, the solution. This thing here is uh, unbound, so it, it could be anything. It's not specified by the input, but it's fine. And this one here is the zebra, because actually the zebra is not mentioned in any of the initial sentences. So you just assume that if each person has one animal and this one has fox, this has horse, then the zebra must be the last one, the only one that nobody has. And it, this runs extremely fast. I think it's three milliseconds. So you could use this for, for some more practical thing. Uh, yes, OK. What else? Another a bit more uh, similar but a bit more advanced example is the uh, a Sudoku solver. Has anybody, everybody played Sudoku? Has anybody? Okay. Okay, so I won't try to define the, the game, but it's basically the source code is the literal definition of the rules of the game. So. So we start with, with this, we have the input will be a, a, these hints. So when it, where it's zero, it's actually a blank uh, cell. If it has a number, it must be that number in the solution. So this is our input. Uh, how does it work? 
we, we call this LVAR function that creates an, a, a fresh uh, variable. So we can uh, give some value to this variable, but it starts without anything. Uh, rows will be a list of, of the rows. I can show you here how it will be done. So suppose that. A range of 81. Here, so we have the REPL, so the help REPL can help us. So if we have that input, uh, the rows will be the, these, the, this structure. So it be nine lists with nine elements each. Let's undo here. Then the columns will be Let's define a locked. Oh, no idea. Okay, so Let's put the result of the last evaluation in rows so that when we calculate columns, we can reuse rows here, right? Right, so this will be columns. So you see 0, 1, 2, 3 here in the first column, and 9, 10, 11. So the REPL is helping us to understand the, the code. Uh, the squares will be This. So with these positions, uh, when you when you call the function get square, you just give it the the x and y coordinate of one cell in, in the original in the hints uh, vector, and it will return you the, all the the nine elements that start that have the nine elements of the square that have that uh, that has that that element as the top left cell. Does it make sense? So if we call square with uh, passing this, the position of this number, 7, can, yeah, here. It will give us this square here, right? Oops. Um, and now the rules of the game. With, so every G means that every every element in the, the sequence that we press in the end must satisfy the goal that we have defined here. So here we have a, a goal that every number must be in this domain. So this uh, the finite domain thing is uh, an extension to, to the core logic. It's not a basic mini current thing, but it's, it's an extension. It, it works. It's integrated with everything else. So we define that all numbers in this sequence, all numbers in all of our, of all of our var variables must have one of these numbers between one and nine. And then we have to initialize them with the variables. And then in every row, all the numbers must be distinct. In every column, all numbers must be distinct. And in all those squares, all the numbers must be distinct. This is pretty much the, the rules of the game. If we run this, it gives us the solution here, which, if you see, it's, it's the same as hints, but replacing zeros with numbers. So, it, yeah, it works and it's super fast. So one 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 good uh, that there is one good talk about um, min current about uh, quines, do you know what that is? Have you watched that, that talk? No? Okay, so a, a quine in computer science is one program that receives as input, uh, that, that produces as output itself, its own huh? input. So if, I've seen two different definitions, so you can give it the, pro the same program as input and has produced the same program. Or you don't pass any input, and it, it must create as output uh, the source code of the program. Does that make sense? Okay. So in in that talk I was mentioning, they they implemented one 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 
one not parser, what's the word? One evaluator, one interpreter of, of source code. They defined the operations, they implemented the, the interpreter. So you could pass any input, any, any, a, a, any abstract syntax tree as in, in Lisp. So, which is the result of parsing any program, but in Lisp, it's it's the basic program, the source code, and it, it evaluates and gives you the output. And since it's all relational, it's not uh, so since he is using logic programming, the input and the output are are the same. So he can specify that the output must be the source code, and then he he can he can get all the programs that generate the the self program as the output. So he has a client generator in the end. Yeah, it's, it's very crazy. Uh, yes, yes, it would be infinitely many, but you can specify how many solutions you want to, to get. I didn't show you here, but here instead of, you can use run star and then get all the solutions, or you can specify run one or run two and get only these many solutions and stop. So if you know that it will be infinitely many, you can specify one number and, and be happy with that. And you can get all the smallest solution or just the one that it... Uh, you cannot guarantee that it's the smallest solution, but if you usually find a, a, a small solution, probably the smallest, because it, it it's the, the way the search works. It's, a, it's like a, a depth first search. And I know, so it's not guaranteed to be this. Yeah, it's not guaranteed anyway. But it, at least in the talk when I was running, all the solutions were, were small. Like you never got a huge, huge program that generated itself. Oh. And this is similar to that library that was a smart text editor that I mentioned that would you would give all the unit tests and it produces the program that generates that that unit test. All of that by implementing an interpreter of the language, because, and then you get the, the program generator for free. I think that's the, the basic. Are there limits to what kind of operations you can use in that interpreter? Um, you know, you have to be certain kinds of operations like cons. Right. Uh, yes, there are limits of operations. Uh, so, we, for example. I uh, mean, Karen doesn't have this finite domain thing. So depending on the operation you want to, depending on the constraint, uh, you cannot declare that constraint with in, in your in your program. I think about like maths things, like you know, given x, given a program that has x plus ten, can it find the value of x so that the result is fifteen? Mm -hmm. Yes, that that it, it can do. Yes, so it can find the reverse function. Yes. Does that happen in general, or is it, is it like a very restricted sort of domain? If it had, like so what do you mean? finding inverse functions is sort of a hard problem. Uh, in general. Uh, right, yeah. right. Um, like with yeah, my my guess is that it only works with basic operations like yeah. plus minus. Uh, yeah, I think if you use very like some advanced, if you use some function like logarithm or something it would probably not not there is no way to represent that in, in logic programming oh. and another thing that's cool here is that you can as as opposed to prolog you can use closure in the rest of your program so if you have one uh, one rule based engine in one part of your program but you want to expose that as a web application or something you can use a closure web framework and have this only in this part if you use prolog you can there is probably some web framework in prolog but i wouldn't want to use that <laughs> or the other alternative is to have one prolog process and one web uh, server and have some form of inter process communication but that will be so fun like so easy to implement as using the same language everywhere. What's the, um, what's the actual time of um, the 
the relations, like the, the closure day. types. Yeah, is it, what, what, what actually is it? Is it a function? Is it a? No, I think it returns a data structure that represents what it. Something that we would. Ah, it's a function actually. Yeah, so, cool. So it's a, yeah, it's a closure. I, I thought it was like a, a vector representing the, the constraints or something. Uh, let's see. Let's see if that's because of every G is a, a separate thing or not. Now, yeah, see, here we, we cannot run uh, th these relations like member all, next all. We cannot simply evaluate them. Ah, we can add ah, it's here, because here underscore is not defined. Okay. So it's a function. We want to call it. Uh, probably it receives the the, the state like a map or something. Then it's another function. <laughs> huh. No. Strange. I ah, see it, it must impl uh, the argument must implement a, a protocol here, and our map doesn't implement, so we would have to create that. So instead of running here, it will be easier to see the source code. Uh, when I say that we can use closure with this, it doesn't have to be so separate as a, the web part and the logic part. Even when you're building uh, the, the structure of the logic part, you can use, for example, here we are transposing the functions. There, there is a way to define a, a relation that transposes its input. But it, it would be much worse than just using the closure way of, of, of transposing uh, the, the sequence of, in, in its input. So we can use in, in parts of the, log the, the logic engine, we can use closure to help uh, core logic. How many puzzles have you tried? Hmm? How many puzzles have you tried? How many puzzles I have tried? Uh, only this, that, that was the, the example. We can try different, yeah, we cannot, if we just modify it, it will be oh, you unsolvable. We can try to make it easier, so at least this this modification should, shouldn't make it impossible, right? Let's see what happens. Yeah, no, there are two possible solutions. Okay, but if we want to try a totally different uh, puzzle, it would take a while, like we would have to find that. There's some, some puzzles that I tried that doesn't like I didn't use the logic, but I tried some take like two milliseconds, but some take like two seconds. Somehow. Yeah. I, I, just different puzzles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure if there is some puzzle that's so hard that it would take two seconds, I think. I don't I know, probably no. it's a different implementation. Mm. Because using logic, I'm using algorithms. Mm -hmm. Right. But then this thing inside boils down to some algorithm anyway. Mm -hmm. so this, this logic eventually inside it is an algorithm, and mm -hmm. like search in the tree that was constructed over there. Yes. Yeah. Can you tell me the number of, the number of solutions it can detect? It, it, it can tell only if it, it finds all of them. So, yeah, you cannot get the number of solutions without finding them all. I uh, have to import to run here just a second. Forty five solutions for this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty fast. <laughs> uh -huh. 
But actually, by right, I think if you I read somewhere in the Sudoku that you the puzzle that the valid puzzle is the one that only give you one solution. Mm, I have to. You, you want to build the puzzle, so you are <laughs> the... No, no, I mean, I mean that's, that's what the, I think the Sudoku is a sort of the rules. I mean, mm -hmm. you have the puzzle, and the puzzle only can resolve into one one solution. Mm. If you have two solutions, that, that puzzle is not valid. So, you know, you still, you, you still can generate, like, you can generate 45 solutions, but that is that puzzle is not valid. So you have one puzzle that only can generate, you have one solution to it, and that is the valid puzzle. Right. You, you want to have one rule like that so that the solver only fi only. If you if you're writing a solver, you were writing a puzzle generator, yes. But what I'm saying is, I think that the, the general rule for Sudoku is uh, the puzzle that you have mm. can only resolve to one search. Ah, uh, okay. That, that's yeah, that, that, that's, that's part that's of the. One. Yeah. If you have one puzzle that is generated into more than one, that 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 is discarded, and they have you have that not valid. Mm -hmm. uh, I see. Would it be possible to write that in core dot logic? Find me all of the puzzles that only have one solution. I think it it should work if you use uh, nested calls of this run function. <laughs> yeah, <it's> take a while. <laughs> if your if if the specification of your problem that we're running in the solver calls another solver yeah. and, and it counts the Th th there is one, one goal, one clause, that it's the length of a, of a list must be equal to something. Yeah. So you can use so that. As long as, you can, as long as you can call the solver nested. Then yeah. Cool. Any other question? So I think that's it. Okay, thank you.